So let's begin. We've got Resident Evil 4, one of the best games on the GameCube by far. It's a third person over the shoulder and is probably the best Resident Evil game ever. It's got the most playability, it's got the most fairly decent story outside of the books, but they don't really count, I suppose. And really, this is probably the one game for the system that I've put the most hours into. Here we've got the GameCube version of Resident Evil, a game I hate so much that I have yet to progress beyond barely the first couple of minutes. I hate this game. In fact, this is actually my second copy of it. The first copy I bought, I took it home, I tried to kill the first zombie. I put I don't know how many bullets into him, I stabbed him with the knife and all of that. He just wouldn't die. I thought it was a glitch, so I took it back. The only reason I really own it now was so I could get footage for the Resident Evil book review. I hate it so much, you wouldn't believe. Here's Resident Evil Zero. I hate it so much, you wouldn't believe. It's just so terrible. The controls, the, everything about it I hate. It shall not be discussed any further. And here we have F-Zero GX. I'd almost be willing to say that it's the best in the series, but it's still not really my favorite. I guess it's because I grew up with F-Zero on the SNES. It's got some of the best graphics I've seen on any console. I mean, especially for the GameCube. It still looks good compared to 360 games. It's, it's far more fluid than any other racing game I've played. They did fix, for this uh, iteration, the drifting, because the drifting is just spot on. It's just a tremendous amount of fun to play. And really, it's just a great all-around game, except, and that's the reason why I don't say this is my favorite F-Zero, the story mode. Now, the story mode is almost impossible. It's just so hard to, con to actually beat the levels. But when you beat the levels, you can't just go to, like, if you beat level 2, you can't just go to level 3. You have to have a number of tickets, and you have to win different circuits to get more tickets. It's just so angering. I almost just stopped playing it all together when I learned that. But if you, if you let that go, it's still a great racing game nonetheless. And here we have Metroid Prime. Oh, what to say about this one. I don't exactly hate it, but I don't like it either. I can't find anything in it. I haven't actually beaten it. It's just, you think you have an idea of where you're supposed to go. But you find you can't actually get there. And so basically you just wander around for hours, not really knowing where you're supposed to go. Or actually, you know where you're supposed to go, but you don't know how to get where you're supposed to go. It just really sucks all the fun out of it, for me, anyway. And here we have Super Smash Bros. Melee. A fairly decent fighting game, and actually, this was the first game I ever bought for the GameCube. And really, it's pretty good. There's not much to say about it. It's just a straightforward fighting game. The main problem with it, though, is the camera zooms out far, too far, to where you can't really tell who you are. Sometimes, you don't even know what you're doing. You're just mashing buttons, hoping that you don't die. And here we have Rogue Leader, or Rogue Squadron 2. It's nowhere near as good as the first, unfortunately. This is, a, this is another game that I have yet to beat because it annoyed me. Really, the first level of a game should not be that difficult. It should ease you into it. You should learn how to play it from the first level. Well, here's the thing. The first level, you're on the Death Star, or you're flying above the Death Star. And when it comes to actually launching the proton torpedoes into the thermal exhaust port, it's not there! I know where the thermal exhaust port is supposed to be, but it's not there. It's literally not there. I keep losing the mission because I can't ever find it. And I'm going to say it again. Damn, that's a lot of games! Alright, we've got Red Faction Gorilla. It's a third-person open-world game that is so much fun, it's not even funny. It uses the Geomod engine, or actually not the Geomod engine, but a modern version, essentially. You've got a hammer, and you can smash down buildings. I don't think anything gets more fun than smashing down an entire building with just a hammer. Also, 
there's some missions where you have to rescue people. It's a lot of fun to take a truck and drive it through the building and rescue them that way. Here's COD 4. This is a game that I kind of liked. A little bit. The, for the single player campaign wasn't too bad. The story was pretty decent, I suppose. Although, unfortunately, by the time that I actually bought it, I had already known about that A-bomb at the end where your player dies, but and so that didn't really affect me too much. And for the multiplayer, I get killed way too much, so it's not all that much fun for me. Here we have Eat Lead, the return of Matt Hazard. It's a third-person shooter that I bought because I really like the idea of the story. The gameplay is exceedingly average, but the story is really what sells it. It's where it's like a video game character and it goes through his life. It's just hilarious. Here we have Assassin's Creed. I don't actually have Assassin's Creed 2. This game is another third person open world game. We're starting to get a trend here. I like it because you can climb around all, all around buildings and you can like have sword fights with the guards. Now, in the game, if you get exposed to the guards, you have to run away or hide in, like, haystacks and things of that nature. You know how I like to get away from the guards? I like to have them all surround me, have, like, 15 or something, and slaughter the entire lot. That's the best way to hide from somebody, when you've gouged out their eyes. That's kind of bad, but guess what? I don't care. That's how I like to do it. Here we have Brutal Legend. This is awesome. It's basically Jack Black in Jack Black World. <laughs> It's basically where this guy, it's a, he's a roadie, he gets transported to, like, a heavy metal universe. Essentially, the game rocks. Although, like many others, I don't particularly like the RPG, not the RPG, the RTS elements too much. Although, they're not elements, they really dominate, like, the second half of the game with the stage battles and all that. I really like just the third-person open-world style myself. But, it was just great, to say the least. Here we have Mass Effect 1, which is essentially my... I'd like to say it's my second favorite RPG of all time. Second only to KOTOR 2. It's a third-person RPG. It has an absolutely exceptional storyline. It's just great. It also has some vehicle... It has a lot of exploration in it as well. You like explore strange new worlds and discover new civilizations and things of that nature. You get a little vehicle you can drive around that has like a turret on it and a cannon and all that. Really quite a bit of fun there. Here's something that's not any fun at all. Batman Arkham Asylum. It's boring to say the least. To me, this game let me down quite a bit. It's just, it's not a Batman game. You go around Arkham Asylum. I've had some people tell me that, oh, well, you didn't pull off the combos. How is that going to make it any better? I still fight the same guys over and over again. Here is Aliens vs. Predator. Where the three is, I don't know. Now, I've, I've been kind of harsh on this game. It's not terrible, and it's not bad. It's just absolutely average. It's just... It's not what I expected, essentially. Maybe, I, w I will admit this, maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe I was expecting something a little bit better after close to ten years. But, oh well. I guess, I guess the main thing that angers me the most is this came out first. Where is Colonial Marines? I want Colonial Marines. I don't want this. I want Colonial Marines. And now, I've read that Gearbox... The people that were going to actually make Colonial Marines are going to be doing Duke Nukem Forever. So, let me guess, Duke's going to come out, but they're going to cancel Colonial Marines. Here's Dead Space. I already did a video on this. It's a third-person survival horror, and it's probably my second favorite survival horror, second only to Resident Evil 4. The reason? Well, it just felt that this game was a little too short. However, it is helped by the fact that you've got that awesome power armor. Any game with power armor is a winner in my book. Here's Just Cause 2. It's another third-person open-world game. I really like those these days for some reason. This is really open-world. The, the world is just massively large. 
And you can control airplanes, you can control helicopters, you can drive anything. And you've also got an awesome grappling hook. You can sort of swing around like Spider-Man in different, in different places. Here's Turok. For some reason, people don't like it, but I think it works really well. In fact, in Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, you primarily fought cyborgs. In this one, you actually face dinosaurs. And you actually fight them like you would a dinosaur. I'd say this game worked really well. It also worked really well because I got it really, really cheap. I think it was only 10 bucks when I got it. Here's Mass Effect 2. I thought it was a little short. It just felt short to me. Maybe it was so good that time just flew by. But the storyline is even better than Mass Effect 1. The reason it's not like my first favorite RPG it's because they took away your vehicle. Now, you only, now all you get is a shuttle that just lands you. It's not quite as fun. And also because you can die at the end. And probably the biggest reason is I have yet to finish it. I'm just afraid to. I don't want Shepard to die. I don't know. That's just me. Here we have Mirror's Edge. This is a first-person platformer. I thought it was unique. Even if it did get annoying at times. And also... There's some places where you just cannot really figure out where you're supposed to go, and that just really ruins it for me. Here we have Star Trek Legacy. I love this game. It's like Star Trek, it's like Starfleet Command 3, except it's got vastly better graphics, and I think the combat's a little bit improved. Really, I would like to get the PC version. Because I think it's going to be a little bit better, especially now that they've released a couple of patches. What, when I first got this game, I had thought to get the PC version, but I'd heard that it was so buggy and that the controls were absolutely terrible, so I just went the three, with the 360. And surprisingly enough, it really worked well with console controls. And here, of course, is Halo 3. This is the last Halo game I ever bought. I wasn't too disappointed with it. I felt that the campaign was a little short, but I did like, I did really like the Forge, the map making system. I thought that was quite a bit of fun to play with. Once again though, for multiplayer, I don't really like it because I get killed all the time. I guess I'm just not very good at multiplayer. Here we have Far Cry 2. It's nowhere near as good as Far Cry 1 by far. Unfortunately, my copy it's broken. I can't save, so I haven't actually been able to beat it. Really though, from what I could see, it's just, it's too dark and too dreary. It puts me to sleep whenever I try to play it. Here's Rock Band. I, of course, got the entire package, and I used it for about a period of two years. Now, the drum set's broken, the microphone's broken, and the guitar is now in a box. Essentially, though, the track list was pretty good, but I just didn't play it nearly as much as Guitar Hero, unfortunately. Here we have Dead Rising. Hate it, 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 hate it. Uh, did I mention I hated it? Ah, uh, you have 72 hours to basically fight your way through a zombie-infested mall. I'm not kidding when I, could say, when I say I could probably do better than the main character. It's just not fun. There's too many zombies and not enough good weapons to use. And also, when I unload 39mm rounds into somebody's head, I expect them to die. And I'm talking about there's some humans in there. The whole life bar method for a human makes no sense. If I shoot somebody in the head, they're not getting back up. Especially if I shoot them in the head three times, or 30 times, or whatever the case may be. I get the idea of a life bar on like a giant monster or a giant robot, but not some idiot with a P90. Also, hate it. Here we have Ninja Gaiden 2. It's a third-person game where you go around and you cut up foot soldiers and things of that nature. It has considerable difficulty, but slicing off arms is always fun. Here we have RE5. Did I like it? Uh, I can say this. It's like maybe 25% as good as RE4. There's a, when I, I almost stopped playing it. I literally almost just shut the system off and put it up. 
Not because the gameplay was bad, but because I just... I thought the story was so stupid. When you've got these two idiots fighting a 30 story, well, maybe not 30 story, but a giant monster, I'm sorry, you need a battle backer. You need a giant robot. Not two idiots with a 9mm and a 12 gauge. Here's Force Unleashed. You know, I've got to admit, I wanted to like it. But, I just, it was another game I could not get into, unfortunately. It's essentially a slightly better version of God of War. The Force powers are okay and the lightsaber's okay, but it just feels a little stiff to me. Here we have Rainbow Six Vegas 2. I did have Vegas 1, but I ended up selling it. I do have Vegas 1 again for the PC. This game is... Pretty much identical to Vegas 1, except your squad mates are a little bit smarter, essentially. And also, they change the main character's voice. It's a tactical first-person shooter, for, for those that don't know. Meaning you can't just yell charge and kill everything in sight. You have to take cover and things of that nature. I'm starting to really like tactical first-person shooters. It's a little bit slower, but it's a little bit more rewarding as well. Here we have Section 8, a first-person shooter that I really do like, even if there is no campaign. I basically just play the, uh, the little instant action battles. You've got an awesome suit of power armor, you've got a jetpack, you've got super speed, and you can also call in battle mechas. The only problem is, when you call in battle mechas, uh, the game chugs so badly. I mean, you barely can do anything. But really though, this is a nice little, I'd say it's almost casual, you just pop it in, shoot a, shoot, shoot a few bad guys and move on. And last, but not least, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. It's a much more straightforward fighting game than the other Mortal Kombat's that were on the PS2. Gone is the little quest mode, gone is the, what's called the crypt, where you can unlock little things like concept art and things of that nature. There is a story, and the story itself is decent. I wouldn't want, I don't want to say it's like comic book fair, simply because there's a lot of good comics out there. And this one's basically what you would expect from comic book fair. This is like stereotypically comic book, essentially. It's, the basic uh, gist of it is... Khan, the enemy from Mortal Kombat, merges with Darkseid, the enemy from DC, and basically tries to, I think, merge different realms or something. I don't even remember. The fighting in it is still pretty good. I found myself being able to pull off a few combos, more so than I could say for some of the other Mortal Kombats. All in all, having Batman fight Sub-Zero, you can't really go wrong with that. This is certainly dragging, isn't it? Well, before I sign off, we're going to look at two more consoles. Alright, so here is my Game Boy Color. I did own an original Game Boy, and I did own a Game Boy Pocket. Those two got sold, so I could have this thing. Color really does help. And I got the uh, teal one, mainly because I really like blue quite a bit. Now I never owned that many games for the system. We've got Godzilla the series. It's essentially a side-scroller where you play as Godzilla blowing up various things. Now I never actually, now that I look at my different game cartridges, I never actually owned a real Game Boy Color game. Godzilla is the closest one. Here we have Tetris that survived from my original Game Boy. It's just Tetris. Now, two years ago, uh, the place where I lived got hit by a hurricane. Now, the ho my home did not actually suffer any damage, but the power was out for about a week. Essentially, all I had at the time was this. This is all I had. I had sold my PSP games, mainly because my PSP disc reader broke, so really, for about a period of a week, I played Tetris on the Game Boy. And, to say the least, it has held up quite a, quite a bit well. Here we have Pokemon Yellow! 
I think everybody knows what Pokemon is. Here's Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, and that's all for the Game Boy, unfortunately. Here is my Game Boy Micro. To tell you the truth, I carry this everywhere I go just in case I need to play something. Like, you know, I always carry it just in case I have to wait in line for a long period of time. It's just something there that if I don't have the ability to get to my book or anything, that I at least have something to do to pass the time. Here we have my three games here. We've got Metroid Fusion, the only Metroid game that I have to say I really, really like. I originally had Super Metroid on the SNES. I liked it, but it was I still couldn't figure out where I was supposed to go, unfortunately. Here we have Namco Museum. It gives you Miss Pac-Man, Gal Galaxian, Galaga, and Pole Position. All quite fun, to say the least. And here is Super Mario World. This game is great on the go, to say the least. I never actually owned Super Mario World on the SNES, although I did own Super Mario All-Stars. Playing it again, it definitely has held up quite well. And usually, if I'm not playing, not that, Metroid Fusion, I've got this one. And so, essentially... That's all my console games. There could be one or two hiding somewhere, but that is the majority of them all. And damn, do I have a lot of games. So this is General Watts wishing you good. Let's pick something absolutely random. Let's see. Uh, how about... Oh, I just found this one. Mercenaries 2 rolled in frames. <laughs> it must have fallen down. Okay, here's Mercenaries 2 World in Flames for the 360. Well, was it as good as Mercenaries 1? Uh, that's open to conjecture, I suppose. It's like Mercenaries 1, except it's marginally... I'll say it's marginally more complex than Mercenaries 1. I just don't think it's actually better. This is a game I was really looking forward to, and I still feel a little bit let down. So there's that. Now, with some degree of confidence, I've showed you most of my games. Like I said, there could be some more hiding around here somewhere. I don't know where, and I haven't even gotten to the PC games yet. But I think we've gone on long enough. So this is General Loss wishing you good. Let's just be lazy. Tetris! Good. Let's just dig around for just a little bit. Not good, this one. Did I mention I really hate this game? Uh, how about good... Ninja Gaiden 2. Or whatever makes you happy.